At the beginning of 2023, the Bank of America Alaska Airlines credit card underwent some major changes to their perks and benefits. Some of these benefits are positive and some are negative. So let's go through a list of these changes together to see whether or not this card is still worth it for you. I've simplified all the major changes into these seven main topics. So first things first, the annual fee has increased from $75 to $95, which to be honest is not that unexpected given the amount of new benefits this card has. And even with that increase, the annual fee is still just under $100, which puts this card on par with a lot of other mid-tier cards in the same category, such as the Chase United Explorer, America Express Delta Gold, and the City A Advantage Platinum Select. But unfortunately, annual fees are going up as a whole across all credit cards, so it is what it is. The next change that we need to discuss are the changes to Alaska's famous companion fare. There are two ways to get this companion fare. The first is with an elevated sign-up bonus, and the second is at each account anniversary year. The current sign-up bonus at the time of the recording of this video is to earn 70,000 bonus miles plus Alaska's famous companion fare after spending $3,000 within the first 90 days of account opening. Now this perk is one of Alaska's most beloved benefit on the card, so let's take a closer look on why it's so valuable. The companion fare is valued at $122, which is broken down into a $99 fare, plus taxes and fees from $23, and is valid for one guest traveling with a primary cardholder on the same itinerary. The primary cardholder must purchase a coach ticket on alaskaair.com using their eligible Alaska Airlines credit card. Although the primary card holder and guests both have coach tickets, both are eligible to upgrade to a higher C class using paid upgrades, elite upgrades, or by using miles. So of course, the more expensive the flight, the more value you can get from this companion fare. But having said that, remember you still have to buy a fare yourself, so searching for the most expensive flight to use the companion fare isn't always going to go in your favor. Now the big change with this perk is that at each account anniversary, you must spend $6,000 or more on the card within the prior anniversary year to qualify for the companion fare. Broken down, this is about $500 per month. Now there are mixed reports if this applies to current cardholders or not, but from what I've read, this applies to all cardholders effective March 2023. From my perspective, I think this is a largely negative change since this really forces you to use this card at least a little bit throughout the year. Before these changes, people could use the card just for the benefits and then could sock drawer it until it was time to use the card again, and this is probably why this benefit was changed the way it was. Although you now have to spend money on the card to keep the companion fare benefit, Bank of America has come up with additional benefits to help make you feel better by adding new multipliers. The Alaska Airlines card originally earned 3x miles on Alaska purchases with 1x miles on everything else, but now also offers 2x miles on gas, transit, cable, and streaming services. But that's not all. The next added benefit to this card is a relationship bonus, so if you have an eligible Bank of America account, you earn 10% more rewards miles on all purchases. This brings the multipliers up to 3.3x miles on Alaska, 2.2x miles on gas, transit, cable, and streaming services, and 1.1x miles on everything else. Now that's all well and good, but if you look at these multipliers, they aren't that competitive compared to the category earnings in other cards. But I do want to point out that if we use the TPG valuation of 1.8 cents per mile for Alaska miles, these multipliers jump to 5.94x on Alaska, 3.96x on gas, transit, cable, and streaming, and 1.98x on everything else, and these multipliers are much more in line with the other credit cards. The next new benefit that was introduced was priority boarding. With this benefit, you can enjoy an earlier boarding position to be able to board the plane faster and get overhead bin space for your carry-on bag. And personally, I'm a huge fan of early boarding and I love this perk when I fly since I'm not the biggest fan of gate checking my bag. Note that to get this priority boarding benefit, you will have to purchase your airfare with the Alaska Airlines card, but this is similar to other cards that offer this benefit, for example, the Chase United Explorer card. Another useful travel benefit on this card is the free check bag perk. With this benefit, the primary cardholder gets a free check bag as well as six additional guests who also get a free check bag that's also traveling on the same reservation. Now if you fly Alaska even once or twice a year round trip, this benefit alone will cancel out the annual fee as the first check bag is $30 each way. So if you fly a round trip twice a year on Alaska with one check bag, that's already $120 in value. And if you fly once with six other guests, that would be $210 in savings each way or $420 in savings for a round trip itinerary, which is great for those of you with big families or just have a lot of friends. And just like I mentioned before, the primary card holder has to purchase airfare on the Alaska Airlines card for the check bag benefit as well as the priority boarding benefit. In the past, this wasn't the case, and you could get free check bags as an existing card holder without purchasing the flight on the card. But as shown by these new updates, Bank of America and Alaska Airlines are both pushing card holders to use their cards more, and this is another way for them to make sure you pay for your Alaska flights exclusively on your Alaska Airlines card. 
The next revamp benefit is the discount of $100 off an Alaska Lounge Plus membership when it's purchased on the Alaska Airlines card. As you can see from this table, an Alaska Lounge Plus membership includes nine Alaska lounges and 90 plus partner lounges. The nine locations are one in Anchorage, Alaska, three in Seattle, Tacoma, Washington, two in Portland, Oregon, one in San Francisco, California, one in Los Angeles, California, and one in JFK in New York City. Other partner lounges can be found on their website, but include AA Admirals Clubs, Qantas Clubs, and additional select lounges. The cost of Alaska Lounge Plus membership is $650 for non-elite status holders and $550 for elite status members, including MVP, MVP Gold, Gold 75K, and Gold 100K. So if you already have a Lounge Plus membership, this benefit would effectively cancel out the annual fee on this card. But if not, there are definitely other credit cards out there to get Lounge membership that may be a better value. With this new benefit, Alaska Airlines has retired their day pass lounge option, stating that they hope that this will help with the overcrowding issues at their lounges, but we'll see if this will be an effective strategy or not. And just like before, the card also gets a 20% in-flight rebate on food, beverage, and Wi-Fi onboard purchases when you pay for these incidentals with an Alaska Airlines card. Okay, so those are the changes to the personal card, but what about the business card? The business card changes are actually pretty similar to the personal card, but there are three areas where they're slightly different, and that's with the annual fee, multipliers, and the Alaska Companion Fare. With the annual fee, Alaska has stated that the company account will increase to $70 each account anniversary date, with an annual fee per card of $25 assessed on the anniversary of each card. And I know that sounds a little bit weird, but since I have a Bank of America business card, I get what they're referring to. So let me show you the inside of my account to show you what I mean. So you can see here that when you get a Bank of America business account, you actually get a corp account, which I think stands for corporate, but I'm not really sure. And then underneath this account, you have your actual credit card account. And I assume that if I were to get any authorized users, those cards will also go under this drop down list as well. With this card, I put expenses on my credit card account, but then I get a monthly statement on the corp account and then make payments also through this corp account. So that's what Bank of America business credit card accounts look like online. So from the previous page, the corp account would be charged a $70 annual fee and my business credit card account would be charged a $25 annual fee. The next difference is the multipliers on the business card. And the only difference with this is that the new 2x multiplier category includes shipping instead of cable and streaming services. And shipping is definitely a more business oriented category, so that makes sense. And for the Alaska Companion Fair, at least at the time of recording this video, there is no mention of a $6,000 annual spend requirement to qualify for this perk. And if this changes, I'll make sure to note it somewhere in this video. I also want to point out that Alaska Airlines updated their awards charts at the end of 2022, and here are the new awards charts that show the miles needed to travel from the contiguous US, including Alaska and Canada, to other parts of the world. For the most part, the awards chart is the same as it was before, and I actually have some screenshots of those on a previous video I did on this card, so link that video up top as well down in the description below, but the main difference is now the card says starting from, meaning that the points needed may be higher depending on the booking. So with all of these changes, is this card right for you? At first glance, this card looks pretty good for those of you who fly Alaska often, given all of its perks. But hold on, it's not that simple. It's important to realize that starting at the lowest tier of elite status, which is MVP, you actually get priority boarding and two free check bags anyways, making those perks on the card effectively obsolete. So then, there's only two other reasons to have this card long term. The first is if you already have or plan on getting the Alaska Lounge Plus membership. Since this gets you a $100 discount, this more than makes up for the annual fee. The second is if you think you'll spend at least $6,000 on the card so you can get the companion fare, which is a good deal, but it's going to take you $6,000 of spend over the course of a year to get there, which makes this perk less appealing. Of course, if you want to get Alaska miles quickly and are gunning for the sign up bonus, which also has the companion fare, then this is another great use case, but this won't be a reason to keep the card past the first year. And so that's the update to the Bank of America, Alaska Airlines, and Alaska Airlines business credit cards in 2023. What do you think of these changes? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you're into airline credit cards, check out this video here where I go over why I decided to downgrade my United Explorer card to the United Gateway card.